going on guys I'm gonna be coming at you today with another video today is a very informative video it is gonna be a tips and tricks guide on how I use the play correctly I'm a new Dead by Daylight player I've been playing for about five months now and I gotta say the play stood out to me the most out of all killers just because of her kit and her uniqueness puking on survivors is always the greatest feeling puking in their mouth is always the greatest feeling so honestly this is the reason why I love her she got a lot to her kit that I really like there's different play styles of playing her just infecting survivors or grabbing your corrupt purge and pretty much snowballing and putting a lot of pressure on the map so I'm gonna start off with her power her power is called the vile purge it's a green vomit that she expels from her mouth and when it touches a survivor, they get infected. You could also vomit on pallets, windows, lockers, totems, exit gates, generators. You can infect anything, right? So if a non-infected survivor interacts with these specific surface areas, they're going to get infected. So how will you know they'll get infected? So if you look in the bottom left hand corner of your screen, they'll usually be four icons and the names of the people who you're facing so if a survivor interacts with a infected surface area their name is going to turn green so that's a great indicator and a great tracker showing you that someone interacted with where you vomited on so if you vomit on a generator and you leave that generator and someone touches it their name will turn green so that'll give you the right away to go to that gen and get the moth as well as another example I like to tell you guys during the end game especially when there's one survivor left you close the hatch and there are two exit gates so the survivor has to go to two exit gates or if they have a key they could escape through the hatch but what you want to do during that situation is you want to puke on one exit gate and leave and go to that other exit gate usually it's on the other side of the map but if you're lucky it'll be closer and if that survivor interacts with the exit gate that you puked on they'll turn green so their name will turn green in the bottom left hand corner and that's a great indicator because you know right away to go to that gate and get them off of it and get the down there's also another way of tracking survivors when they're infected they cough right so it'll be easier for you to hear them on the map if they're hiding in a bush or if they're hiding in a locker, you'll be able to hear them. In dark maps, it'll be really easy to hear them. If you have a headset, I'm telling you, like you'll hear guys across the map coughing and it's a great way of tracking survivors. It's a radar pretty much. And I suggest you guys, if you don't have a headset, pick one up because headsets with plague is ridiculous. When using the plague's Val Purge, you'll notice that there's a bar and pretty much this bar is to show you how much Valpurge you'll let out. You don't always have to charge a bar all the way. You could always let out short streams of vomit on survivors. But if they're usually in dead ends, you always want to try to get as much vomit on them as possible. And the more vomit you get on them, the faster they get infected. So there are two stages to a Valpurge. The regular infection. So right when you puke on someone, they'll get infected. But then, there is a timer on the survivor screen that shows them when they will get broken, right? So this is the second stage of the infection. So when they're broken, that means they're one hit. And the way of telling when the survivor is broken is just by seeing them puke. So when they start puking, as well as you can look at them and you'll see like a green gas around their body, that also means they're broken. Another way of telling if a survivor is broken is by looking in the left hand bottom corner of your screen you could pretty much see that there will be a cross over their name as well as it'll show like a running icon and it'll also be in like a red instead of a green aura so that's a great way of keeping track to know which survivors are broken so those are some indicators that i use to tell that they're broken and i just one shot down them and that's the end of the chase here's another important tip with plague when survivors are broken from their sickness and they interact with non-infected surface areas and interact with survivors, those things will get infected, okay? So for example, if two non-infected survivors are working on a generator and 
a survivor that is infected slash broken works on that generator with them, all those survivors on the generator will become infected. Another example, if a infected slash broken survivor is on a hook and a teammate comes to take them off who is not infected, that teammate who took them off the hook will become infected. So this is a great way of the plague spreading sickness around the map and it really gives you good map control. During your chases, you really want to try your best to infect survivors and pretty much try to get them in that broken state so you could get a one shot down on them. Not all the time this is going to be effective. I'd say do that when they're usually in dead zones or they're in the open and you could pretty much get an easy down on them. But if you're looping with them, I tend not to do that. I just go for the regular basic attack on them and just try to end the chase as quick as possible because if you try to puke on them around strong loops, they're just gonna be wasting your time. You're gonna be wasting your time and gens are gonna be flying, right? So you guys do not wanna do that. Just go for basic hits around strong loops and you guys should be fine. There's another important tip with using the plague that I would like you guys to know. When you body block a survivor, meaning if a survivor is in a corner and you go right in front of them, they won't be able to move. So what you want to do is just puke on them until they're broken and you're pretty much going to one shot down them and that's going to end the chase so quickly. So not all the time you're going to be able to infect survivors. If you're down a survivor and they're not infected, what you could do is just go over their bodies and puke on them on the floor and they'll get infected. Um, another way of getting them infected, if they're not infected already, if you hook them, you just go in front of them, stand in front of them, and you're gonna aim your puke at the floor where their feet are hanging from, and you're just gonna puke there and they will get infected on the hook. So let's talk about aiming your vomit and how to aim accurately and precisely. It's very, very complicated for me to explain to you guys because there's been so many bugs with her that it changes the angle at which her vomit comes out. Before this new blight patch, her vomit came out a lot higher so you could get people further away without aiming as high. So what I mean aiming as high, I mean like when you tilt your head up, you aim your vomit a lot higher so you could get snipes pretty far away from you when you're using Corrupt Purge or Vile Purge. But now because of the blight patch, her vomit is back to normal where it used to be so you have to aim a lot higher than usual. So you guys need to take that into consideration when using her. So yeah, that's pretty much it for her Vile Purge power. Um, honestly, it's one of her greatest tools for putting pressure on the map. When everyone's infected, it's just a beautiful thing for you guys because they know that they're one shot down and you pretty much could hear them anywhere. So yeah, it's a great radar. You pretty much have a great radar on your one shot down killer. Survivors typically don't like to cleanse against the plague, especially when you get into red ranks. So you guys really need to know how to play the plague when survivors don't want to cleanse. Guys, don't see this as a bad thing. This is actually a good thing. And a lot of survivors lose games because they make this mistake with plague. They think that not cleansing is a way to go against her. But when you think about it, say if all four guys are broken, that means you're a one shot killer at this time. And you pretty much have a radar knowing where they are. So this is really strong for you, right? But the reason why they don't want to cleanse is because they know they, you'll get a really beefy, beefy power that will literally just screw them over big time. That's why they don't want to cleanse. And I'm going to be talking about this specific power right now. This power is called the Corrupt Purge. The Corrupt Purge is broken. So how do you get your Corrupt Purge? You're wondering. On every map when using the Plague, there are water fountains located around the map. I believe there's five. So when a survivor is infected, they could go to one of these cleansing stations and cleanse. So that means they won't be infected anymore. So that water fountain that they went to is gonna be corrupt, right? When they cleanse at one of these fountains, you're gonna get a sound notification as well as the fountain is gonna light up in white on the map. So you'll know exactly where the survivor cleansed. So if you go to that specific cleansing station, you can now grab your corrupt purge. And when you grab the Corrupt Purge, you now have it in your vicinity. I believe it lasts 60 seconds of Corrupt Purge. So what Corrupt Purge does is a vomit 
but instead of infecting survivors, it will hurt them. It's really good with ending chases quickly because there's no end lag on your hit. So when you get your hit with Corrupt Purge, you can easily catch up with them and use your Corrupt Purge again and get them down instantly. This is why survivors do not want to cleanse against her because they know how powerful and lethal her power is. So guys, always use your Corrupt Purge in the right way. Never just grab it if you don't have information on where survivors are. If you have information on where survivors are, gladly pick up your Corrupt Purge and head over there and apply as much pressure as possible. You guys could pretty much use tr any tracking perk. So some good tracking perks on her are Infectious Fright. Really, really good. I'll say it's one of her strongest perks because what Infectious Fright does is when you down a survivor, any survivor within your terror radius will scream. So you'll pretty much go over there where they are and just get the down. That's how strong she is, especially with Infectious Fright. And when she has Curl Purge, it's honestly scary because survivors know how strong it is. That's why they do not cleanse. So yeah, that's pretty much it for Corrupt Purge. You guys have to know when to use it and how to use it. And the more you play Plague is the better aim you'll have with using it as well as there's some techniques when using it as well. You could, to cover more surface area, you just wanna tilt your screen left and right so the blood vomit will cover up more space. If survivors like to juke you, you just spray that thing left and right and it's gonna hit them. They can't juke that. I'm gonna explain to you guys what to do when survivors don't wanna cleanse. This is probably the most important thing to learn when playing Plague, right? So there's some ways in forcing survivors into cleansing. And some of these ways are perks that you could use and add-ons. Her strongest add-on by far is Black Incense. Black Incense is a red add-on which pretty much reveals the auras of survivors who are throwing up. So they have to be in a broken state and when they're throwing up, you get to see their auras for five seconds. That's ridiculous. If survivors know you have this, most likely they're gonna cleanse. As well as, there's some perks that I love, and I notice this perk is not being used a lot when using the plague. It's called Blood Echo. So what Blood Echo does is, when you hook a survivor, any survivor that's hurt, lose exhaustion perks for 45 seconds. So that means no dead hard. That means no sprint burst, no life, no balance landing. It's so good. So many survivors depend on their exhaustion perks when they're facing killers. Let's admit that, right? Mostly every survivor has an exhaustion perk in their perk layout. So it's a great, great way of forcing them to cleanse because they know, okay, if I'm broken, I'm gonna lose my exhaustion perks. But let's talk about looping with Plague. So when looping with survivors, you don't always wanna keep trying to puke on them and get them infected. These are times that is very, very important so you don't waste time on survivors during loops. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by this. So there are two kinds of loops. There are the high wall loops where the survivor can loop you around the loop, but you won't be able to see them because the walls are so high. And there are open loops, so loops that you can actually see the survivor, okay? So I'm gonna be telling you about what you can do in these specific loops. You guys always wanna puke on window vaults as well as pallets right and then just pretty much loop with the survivor or maybe you could try to mind the game them and get the basic hit on them usually they'll drop the pallet or vault the window and if they do that they will get infected so that's an easy way of getting them infected you don't always have to puke on survivors all the time you can always puke on pallets or vaults if you know they're going to interact with it now for the short loops Short loops is easier to get survivors, especially if Corrupt Purge. You could just easily vomit over the little obstacles that are in your way and you could hit the survivors. Since the plague is really tall, you could get those easy hits on them. So open loops are better for infecting survivors or using your Corrupt Purge on survivors. That's the main point I wanna get across there. So I'm gonna be talking to you about our add-ons and the add-ons I use most of the time. Sometimes I use Black Incense, but I rarely use it because it's by far her most broken add-on. Her next add-on that I use sometimes is called Iridescent Seal. 
Everything Death and Seal is a red add-on and pretty much what it does is when a generator is completed, you will automatically get your corrupt purge without you even having to go to a fountain. But there's some downsides to this, right? Your movement speed will be decreased when you're using your corrupt purge, as well as the time you have it for will be decreased. So instead of 60 seconds, you'll have it for I believe 45 seconds. So you guys keep that in mind when using that add-on, okay? So this combos well with Bitter Murmur. So Bitter Murmur is a killer perk. When survivors complete a generator, the survivors that completed that generator's auras are revealed to you. So it's a great combo because when they finish that generator, you're gonna get your corrupt purge and you'll see their auras. So that's a great way of going over to that generator and getting those downs and snowballing them with your corrupt purge. Another good add-on that I really like, I think it's by far my favorite add-on, it's called Rubbing Oil. What it does is it allows you to excrete more vomit than usual. So you'll get to channel out more vomit on survivors, which means it'll get them broken faster, which means it'll cut the chase a lot shorter. As simple as that. Another good add-on for her are her apple add-ons. So they'll just pretty much spawn you an extra fountain of corrupt purge. So if survivors don't want to cleanse, you'll always have an extra backup fountain just in case. And that's pretty much her best add-ons in my opinion. Man, the plague's so good, she counters a lot of things. Some things she counters would be Iron Will. So what Iron Will does is a survivor perk. When a survivor is hurt, they will make zero sound so they won't cry. They won't cry out in agony. <laughs> you know? But if they're infected on the other hand, they're gonna be coughing. So this doesn't count as crying. So this counters Iron Will. It's a, what I love, cause there are a lot of Iron Will gamers, especially when you get in red rank. And some other things that the play counters would be any healing perk or medkits. When you're broken, you can't heal. You have to cleanse in order to be back to normal, right? The only way they could heal is if they're hurt and they're non-infected. I hope you guys found that video informative. If you liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe, and show some love and all my plague mains out there, don't worry, the plague is an amazing killer. If you're having difficulties, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll surely answer it and try to help you guys out as best as I can. But for now, take care guys.